Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. If you've been with us before, welcome anew if you haven't. I'm Samantha Hoffman. I'm Vice President of Chicago Writers Association and Executive Director of Let's Just Write, an Uncommon Writers Conference. And thanks for joining us today for Cocktails and Conversation. If you haven't tuned in before, this is a series where we chat with people who presented at our previous conferences, there have been two of them, and who will be presenting again when we resume in person on March 19th and 20th of 2022. You can find out more information about the conference on our website at chicagorights.org and just click on the tab for the conference and you can register there also. This event will be, is being recorded and um, it'll be posted to YouTube afterwards. So if you have to leave early or your Wi-Fi connection doesn't work, you can tune in to YouTube and see what you missed. And you'll also find the um, previous cocktails and conversation events there in case you missed any of those. And we've had some really great conversations. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you have comments or questions as we go along, please put them in the chat and click on the chat at the bottom of your screen to bring up the window. And try to keep your comments and questions brief because it's really hard to do this event and to monitor the questions at the same time, and especially when they're really long. So we'll try to get to everyone's. If we don't get to your questions as we go along, We'll get, we're gonna have a Q&A at the end of this session. So I have my cocktail. Everybody else have a cocktail? <laughs> All my guys do. Um, <laughs> I'm drinking a Negroni tonight. So I'm gonna try to drink it slow. Um, first, I wanna introduce um, Randy Richardson, who's the president of CWA, as you all know. Nice to have Randy here tonight, and he's going to join in the conversation. And now I want to introduce my friends, Rick Kampfer and Dave Stern from Eckhart's Press. Eckhart's Press is a boutique Chicago publishing company dedicated to serving the brave new 21st century publishing world, and it is a brave new world. Fun fact, the laughing E logo is a constant reminder that life is short. Don't ever lose your sense of humor. And an even more fun fact is I didn't know it was a laughing E until I looked up your bio. Your bio. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, good to know. Um, Eckhart's Press was founded in 2011 by Rick and Dave, longtime collaborators and friends. And the name Eckhart's, which I never knew, so I was really happy to find that out, is a tribute to uh, uh, their father. Did I just hear an echo again? I met going. Sorry, that goes away. Um, the name Eckhart's is a tribute to the men who gave them their creative genes, Camphor's father, Eckhart, and Stern's father, Fritz. Rick is the co-founder and publisher of Eckhart's Press, in addition to being the author or co-author of Eckhart's Press releases, Every Cub Ever, Father Knows Nothing, lots of titles here. I'm not gonna read all of them. <laughs> There's um, eight of them. <laughs> and he's a radio producer and he has lots of great credentials. Feel free to ask him any questions about that. He knows lots of people. Dave Stern is the co-founder and publisher of Eckhart's Press and the author of The Balding Handbook, which is very appropriate, Dave. Yeah, it's the most important book ever write, written. It's amazing. <laughs> and the After, only one he's ever read. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After a 20-year sales and marketing career and a 10-year stint as a principal in a Chicago advertising agency, Stern comes to the Eckhart's Press, uniquely qualified to tackle the realities of ever-changing publishing landscape. So I'm just gonna, without further ado, I'm gonna say welcome guys. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for um, having us. Rick and Dave were part of a panel to, uh, at our last conference and it was a wildly popular panel. So we're gonna do that again next March. 
I'm just going to jump right in and ask you guys, what was your, whatever made you want to start a publishing company and how did you do that? Well, um, I had been a previously published author. I had two books that were published the traditional route through a big New York publishers. One was a division of Simon and Schuster. Um, that was a, a nonfiction book and then a fiction book. And I had an agent and I did the whole, you know, uh, dance that you have to do to get something published in New York, which is ridiculous. And then um, I realized that I was making a 10% of the profits and the publisher was making 90% of the profits and I was doing 90% of the work. And, you know, they didn't help me with any of the publicity. They didn't help me with uh, a lot of the, uh, the nuts and bolts of, of uh, putting out a book. Uh, none of my appearances, nothing. And so I decided, you know, by, for my third book, when I wrote that, I thought, well, I wonder if I can do this myself. And I called up my good friend, Dave, who is, uh, you know, has experience in the uh, paper business and in, with printers and that sort of thing. And we put our heads together and re realized that in this world of digital publishing, it was now feasible to have a publisher based in Chicago and, uh, and make money at it. And so that's how we started Eckhart's Press. And, and before we knew it, our friends were calling. I have a lot of friends that are writers. They called and asked me to help uh, publish them. And before we knew it, we had an actual functioning press. And now it's been 10 years. That's um, amazing. Go ahead, uh, Dave. Let me, I'm sorry, let me just chime. And when Rick called, uh, I was in the process of getting downsized from international paper. So um, it was really a perfect storm that, uh, you know, and, and like Rick said, because of digital printing technology, you don't have to print 10,000 books anymore. You, you, you know, the, the, the cost per unit has become, you know, much more manageable for small publishers. So yeah, it turned out to be a, a, a real good fit. And do you, do this do you both do this full-time is this your full-time um, job we were close well, we both have other things that we do too <laughs> dave is it go ahead dave you, you talk. no i was gonna i was gonna say before the pandemic uh we were on the trajectory or the trajectory of maybe making it a you know our full-time living uh Albeit it wouldn't have been a great living, <laughs> but it would have been, you know, we, we were really close, but the pandemic hit and we had a couple of things happen that, um, you know, I, has definitely pushed us back a little bit. But I also, I teach at Aurora University. Rick is a freelance writer. Um, I have some freelance uh, clients that I do business with. Um, and uh, so, no, not full time. It was close, though. It was really. But it's our, it's our number one. You know, that's the yeah. thing we spend our most time on. Without question. Uh, and how many books have you published in those 10 years? Do you know? Well, uh, on our imprint, on our website, I believe we have published 66 books. But we've also helped people self-publish, um, you know, through Amazon and through other means. And I think, you know, altogether over 80 authors that we've helped. Wow. And Maureen wants to know if um, you publish traditional novels. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, yes. Somebody, we have. You know what? Somebody asked if you, it, it looks like you publish a lot of memoirs. And is that your main? I, I do like, I like memoirs because authors are usually or often introspective people and they're, uh, they're usually introverts. And memoirs are the, like the one thing that they can really go out and promote and they're, they're selling themselves. Um, and that's one of the reasons I like memoirs. And plus, I think everybody has a story to tell and they're, they're mostly quite interesting. But to answer the question as far as if we do novels, yes, we, um, we don't really like to be pigeonholed into any one genre. You know, I think the commonality is something Chicago. Now that right. could be a... Chicago writer. It could be a story about Chicago. It could be some connection, you know, with Chicago. I think that that is really our only, you know, 
if there's a commonality amongst all of our titles. But yes, we do. We've done fiction, nonfiction novels. We've done, um, you know, we've done humor. We've done, you know, pretty much everything. Children's books. Yeah. One of our uh, authors, uh, Ken Korber, is on this. I just saw him. He's done several books with us, children's books. Um, you know, it, if it's good enough, we'll definitely consider it. But, uh, you know, we are picky. And tell us about that. Tell us about your process of who you look for, what you look for, and how you go about that. Uh, well, the first, the most important thing is it has to be good enough. So I, I read every uh, query that is sent in. I read the manuscripts that are sent to us. And if I think it needs too much work, I, I, would, I, won't, I won't consider it. I'll, I'll uh, say thank you, but no thank you. Um, secondly, after I decided it's good enough, is this an author that will hustle? Because it's hard to sell books. Uh, most of you know this. It's really hard to sell books. And you've got to be ready to bust your hump. And if I get the sense that, that the author is like, okay, now that I'm published, what, you, know, you go out and sell my books for me. Um, and that's not the way it works. You, you know, we're, we're a team. We have to work on this together. And then I'll have, and Dave and I talk about this a lot, but I have this thing called Leno Couch Syndrome. <laughs> where if I'm talking to somebody and I can tell that uh, they're expecting to be on the tonight show or, you know, why aren't I on Oprah's book club? Those are red flags for me because you're never going to be happy with the work we're doing. And we've created our entire company to serve authors. We give the highest royalty rates. We work with you more than any other publisher that there is. And if that's still not good enough for you, I think you need to find somebody else. Yeah. Um, I think Rick makes a real good point that authors need to understand the business, you know, and like Rick said, it's really hard to sell books. Um, and um, it's frustrating and it's, you know, it's tough and it's no matter how hard you work, you can always work a little harder. Now we don't expect everybody to, you know, kill themselves obviously, but uh, it's really difficult. Uh, and yeah, the, what I always say is if, if you, if, if you're not willing to do it, why do you think I should be willing to do it as your publisher? Right. And you mentioned, you mentioned earlier, Rick, about being published by one of the big publishers and, and not getting any advertising, not getting, you know, the money didn't come your way to do any right. signings, to do any promotion. And I found that as well with my book. Right. And they don't because they they spend the money on the known authors they're not right. going to spend money on the debut authors unless they hit it really big so and, and, if, and what they consider a failure is what dave and i would consider a success like my my first book sold twenty thousand copies wow which you know i thought was pretty good that is it, good. it sold out you know the print run ran out they had to do another print run and to them, it, it was not considered a success. Simon and Schuster. How can that not be a success? That's a I success don't know. <laughs> by any standards. You know? So, sorry, say that again. That's a success by any standards. I, don't I think would think so. Most publishers, I don't think, ever expect a debut novel to sell. Well, it wasn't a novel. It was a nonfiction book. Well, the, other, the other reason that we started this this up is because we have varied interests where, you know, once you've been published as a certain type of an author, they don't, you know, that you're pigeonholed into that role. I think everybody here knows that where right. I wrote a book that was a, a how to book. And my second book was a novel. And, and my agent said, I'm not interested without even reading it. I don't, I don't push novels. My publisher said, I'm not interested without even reading it because they didn't do novels. And so I had to start all over again for the second book. And I would have had to do it for the third book too. And that's one of the reasons why we started Eckhart's Press. Right. So tell us about your business model. Tell us how you operate in comparison to the big five as far as royalties, advances, support, all of that. Uh, 
Um, Rick, you want me to? Um, yeah. There's really two different ways that a publisher can go about you know, as far as business model, either a high volume, low margin approach where you where you're trying to sell as many books as possible and make a smaller amount of money, the low margin, or the reverse, which is a lower volume and a higher margin um, uh, situation. We are a lower volume, higher margin that uh, publishing inclination because we simply can't afford to uh, compete with the Amazons, you know, right. and the and these bigger these big publishers that are just trying to do it on volume. We don't have the cash flow to be uh, printing up ten thousand books and sending them to every bookstore. You know, I don't know if anybody knows this or uh, that many of the books that you see at Barnes and aren't even bought. The publishers are just putting it on consignment. We don't have that fin financial wherewithal to do whatsoever. Right. Um, digital publishing and digital printing allows us to manage our cash flow, um, and you know we can we can produce fifty books. And it's not all that much difference in a per unit price than if we would print 200 books or 500 books. So I think the, the best way to typify is we're a lower volume, higher margin approach. If an author wants to just get as many eyeballs on their books as possible, that, may, that is not necessarily a good fit for us. Um, we, um, we give 50% of all net profits to the author um, which is, I think, way five higher, times, five <laughs> times more than universally. Way higher. Uh, but in turn, we do expect in some instances that, you know, costs are shared. It depends. We have different deals with many different authors and the different relationships. But like Rick said, um, because we give such a high royalty um, and because we really do participate in the marketing of it, um, through email blasting and trying to book radio appearances and, and so forth, we we can't we can't expect to sell ten thousand books of a, or ten thousand copies of a book, and we never have. Uh, right. So again, we are the small smaller or smaller quantity, smaller volume, higher margin approach. And and we super serve Chicago, and, and that is uh, you know it's a, it's a it's a huge market. And we have relationships with all of the, you know, the independent stores here. But more importantly, we have relationships with the media in Chicago. I was in the media for 20 some years. I know everybody in radio and television and print and um, we can get more publicity uh, just based on our relationships. And we also have a very... Um, uh, a very good e-marketing approach because we control the sales through our website, which means we also control the information. It means that we know, you know, if, if we sell a book about sports, for instance, we have, you know, we know who these people are that are interested in buying books about sports because we've done so many media books that our list uh, just when we do our blasts, go out to people that book guests on, on radio shows and television shows and, and, uh, and do reviews in, in local publications. And we know all these people and that's why we super serve Chicago. If you, if you want me to do that for Philadelphia, I can't do it. I can't do it for, you know, Los Angeles or New York, but in Chicago, a city, uh, you know, a surrounding area of 8 million, I, I can do it. Yeah. And so can Dave. Um, and I think what Rick had mentioned is our approach is different than let's say selling on the high volume, low margin approach. If you sell your book on Amazon, you have, like Rick said, no idea whatsoever who's, who, who's buying those books whatsoever. That information of who your customers are, are so valuable. Anybody starting a business, you know, uh, and we market have supported the local Chicago uh, writers market. You know, we, every time we sign out a blast, we get it's it's usually our biggest sales day um, when when we are um, uh, shipping a, a or when we're doing an email blast announcing a new book. The biggest sales day that we have for that book is the first day. And when we do events, Dave and I are there. You know, the, your publishers are actually there at your event with you. 
um, you know, whether it's your book launch party or whatever, um, because, you know, we're, we're a customer service based and, and, you know, we are really behind our authors. We consider ourselves a team and whenever we can be there to help them, we will. Yeah. And when you send out a blast about a new title, who, like who's on your list? Who does that go to? Uh, well, it goes to absolutely never bought a book from us over 10 years. Uh, it goes to, um, we ask our authors to provide a contact list of their, you know, of their, of their contacts. And we will send an email blast on their behalf to all of their contacts as well. Um, like Rick said, we have probably, I don't know, 150 libraries, acquisition departments that are on our uh, email blast. Every radio station producer, every radio show is on our email list. Um, but I, you know, I think all of that is great, but again, it's cr and controlling the data, controlling who our, you know, who our cu customers are. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd be amazed at how many of our, many of the people that buy books from us really like our mission and like what we're doing as an independent publisher serving the Chicago writing community. Um, we have a lot of repeat business. Yeah. Uh, and um, we're very fortunate. You know, it's not uncommon for us to get an order that seven different titles are being bought. And I know that the person who is, are, is probably not a Cubs, you know, not a Cubs fan, a media fan and a bald fan, but I know that they're buying, you know, they're buying the books because I think that there really is a tendency and a, and a sensibility to support the writing community. And what is your mission? Uh, well, mission is to, is to serve the, the writer's community, them an opportunity for their stories to be told and not get screwed by, by big time publishers. We are, we are on the author's side. That's, that is our mission. We wanna help authors get published in whichever way we can. And, you know, some, some, pub, some books, uh, you know, are better for self-publishing. Some books, uh, you know, are more of, you know, a hybrid model. Some are traditional publishing route, you know, where you pay the royalty a couple times a year. We've done all of those. Um, so we can, I think we can help each individual author find the best way to publish their book. And, and how do you determine that? What's that? How do you determine that? Just through my knowledge of how easy it is to promote something. I mean, if you can't get the word out, uh, your odds of selling are pretty low. So, you know, it has to have some sort of a hook where I feel like I can uh, promote it through our, uh, you know, our resources through the media. Um, or um, it has to be so good, you know, that I, I can send it out uh for reviews that I know we're going to get sterling reviews. Um, those are the kind of things that we look for. I think every publisher does. We, we also, we also look for um, authors that have good um, connections with their own communities. Right? right. A couple of, couple of our books that we've done that have done great. Um, like a comedian, we did a Dolby Maxwell's book and he does a hundred shows a year, you know, and he sells, four or five books every show, you know, right. oftentimes he's had instances that he's a lot of instances where he made more money selling his books than he did actually on his gig that he did. Right. People um, that do a lot of speeches or, uh, you know, personal appearances. Those are also good potential authors for us. And, and, and also there's, um, I, I, I think writing a book or getting a book published is really good for your personal brand too. Uh, we have helped, um, and just off the top of my head, I think we've got two lawyers who really didn't care particularly much how many titles they sold, but the book positioned them as experts, you know, in a particular field. And they do sell right. it when they speak. Um, so, you know, when we, we talk about a successful book, um, it's not always just about how many books are necessarily being sold. It has to be the objective of, you know, what the author you know, what it is that the author is really trying to get out of it, right? And, and sometimes uh, it's a charity. Sometimes they're they're writing a book to help a charity, you know, where, um, 
we've had several authors that have donated their their uh, proceeds to a really? charity. We, uh, I think we had five or six of them. Yeah. So, and one of the the best days that we have as publishers is when the you know the first day that we're the first copy we usually you know we give hand deliver to the author and they and and it's just you know when they when they see their work in print it's really gratifying for us and i yes. can't tell you how many and can't tell me how many times an author will say that their book signing you know their initial book signing release was you know they they, they had more fun than their wedding now those people are divorced <laughs> but uh you know uh but no i mean seriously so you know all look we are a business we are a business we are you know we're we're in it to, to you know to be profitable but there is definitely a greater good in a sense too if that makes you know any sense um, that really is uh why we do it when that like first moment that the author gets their their book in their hands um, i remember what that was like dave remembers what that was like and just being able to share that with so many people has been super rewarding it's it's a uh, it's one of the, one of the best days of your life yeah and what do you do if you have well first of all do you take direct submissions from an author or do they have yeah. to go through an agent or how does that work agent schmagents <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah yeah um no we we uh you know we'll take all comers uh, through our the best way to submit to us is uh, via email Rick at EckhartsPress.com. Dave, David, it's David, right? It's David, David at EckhartsPress.com. Um, I usually will be the one that responds because I'm handling that end of it. Dave is, uh, once, once production starts, that's uh, handed over to Dave and he's the production guy. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean to say that we aren't, Rick and I are not continuously working on everything together. True. Um, and what do you do? I'm putting your email addresses in the chat here. So it's rick at eckhartspress.com and David? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you do if, if you have to type and talk at the same time? <laughs> uh, what do you do if you get a concept, someone approaches you, they submit this idea, it's a book for charity or it's something based on their job or a passion or something and you think it's a really great idea but it's not very well written what do you do then well we have editors work with them um for uh for big picture editing deep editing i usually tackle that myself if i if i think it's something that's worthy of doing but we have editors that we deal with on all, every book we never published a book that it did, has not been edited or proofread you know there's no way we would do that. And is that part of the service? Is that, how does that work? The editing, the layout, the cover design, yep. how does all of that work? That's all part of what we provide. Uh, we do, uh, um, David, what, what else do we do? Editing, uh, interior design, cover, uh, cover design, design right. um, publicity. All the pre, all the pre-press files. Um, uh, proofreading, um, sometimes proofread twice, you know? right. um, sometimes uh, three times. Uh, we also provide um, uh, selling our books through the through our website. We buy all that inventory. We do all the fulfillment. And when we say, and when I say right, we, shipping, we handle all the yeah. shipping. Okay, Rick just said we. Uh, uh, it's really not we. It, it's me. Uh, uh, I like to say that my DNA is on every book that we sell. So if, so if you're planning a crime scene, what you need to do is buy a book from me uh, and graft a, a skin sample and then you could. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we do, we, um, we house all the books, we inventory all the books, we do all the fulfillment. Um, we, se we sell books wholesale to the, to the author that they can. As, as many as they want to. That was the other thing that, that drove me crazy dealing with Simon and Schuster was I got 10 books. I think uh, they gave me 10 books and then I was allowed to buy other books, but only 20, a maximum of 20. 
at wholesale costs. Like, what is that? Right. But right. why would uh, I do not understand that concept? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So, what part of this, out of all of the services that you provide, what part of this does the author pay for? It's it different depends. every time, right? It, yeah, yeah, it depends. Well. Can it depends on what, what they need, has? right? It, it, it depends on how much uh, they're like a lot of authors come to us and they have their own interior designer or cover designer. Um, and, you know, if it's good enough, we'll, we'll accept that. Uh, um, so they wouldn't need that, for instance, or, you know, they have somebody that an editor that they've worked with for years that they prefer to uh, our editors, which is also acceptable to us. But the one thing that they cannot get past is we have to have a proofreader um, at the end of the process. Otherwise, you know, it would just be embarrassing. We can't have that. Right. And all of our services are, uh, we offer on an a la carte basis as well. So right. um, we have been getting to do more and more of um, authors who want to sell, who want to put their books immediately on Amazon and want to self-publish. In fact, we've got three that I'm working on right now where we are providing all the editing, all the interior and cover design. Um, and we're going to hand off and we are handing off the pre-press files to them. And then they make their arrangements with. Right. You know, ingrown and, that, and that won't be, those won't be Eckhart's press books, no. but we still can, we can still do that work for them. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, it depends. It depends on what the um, author needs and, um, and, and, and the deals that we have with our authors are all different, you know, as far as what costs are paid from us versus them. Um, it's, it's difficult to, to have a one size fit all approach. Yeah. Um, so do you ever offer an advance? Yeah. Um, usually we take you to Starbucks. And, Sometimes and you even breakfast. Right. And, if, and if, if you get dessert, you're yeah, an right. enlister. You're right. an enlister. Uh, Unless it's uh, the fruit cup. The fruit yeah, cup yeah. doesn't count. Right. Uh, yeah. So the answer to the question would be no. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> and we're just not, we're not that big. I mean, yeah. we're, uh, we're uh, Chicago. We're a local. We put the word boutique in our title there just so people know. That you know, means no advance. Right. Yeah. Right. Right, exactly. right, right, right. That's French for no. That's French for for a small coffee at Starbucks is what boutique means. So, who's your favorite? Not not the person, but who's your favorite author in concept? The person who comes to you with a book or an idea or whatever. What does that person look like? Uh, well, I think I, I went into it a little earlier, and that is, as somebody who has a, uh, it, first of all, it's got to be good enough, but let, let's just assume it's good enough, right? A, a platform, a platform in which to uh, sell it. E either they're, you know, they've got a lot of followers on social media, or they, they uh, do a lot of events in which they could be selling the book. You know, you know how hard it is to sell a book in a bookstore when you go into a bookstore and there are 10,000 books, you know, what are the odds that your book is the one that gets picked? But if you're doing it a speech and at the end of the speech, the book that is on sale there is your book that you wrote, the odds of selling it is quite good. So that to me is a dream author. I don't know about you, Dave. Um, I, I think we, we did allude to it a little earlier is the understanding the business. And understanding that, um, yeah, yeah, not being Len Leno Couchy, you know, and uh, and just understanding that um, we have to update that. By the way, it should be uh, Jimmy uh, Kimmel now, maybe. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, um, yeah, and just to and, and to realize that um, this world is hard. This right. public, you know, and if you're doing it to make money, the first thing we say is don't do it if you're trying to do it to make money. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's just we're it's, we're in it with you, and 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 uh, you know we'll do whatever we can to help you. You got to help us too, and that is understand the difficulties that we're facing, and you know we'll work together. Right. 
And just so everyone is clear, the, the big five is not gonna give you any more help than Dave and Rick are gonna give you. They're gonna so, give you less. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, I... You know, they have, a, they have a big name that's gonna go on your book. So that's, well, that's, true. that's not worth nothing. But, no, and, and distribution. Uh, you know, the dist nationwide distribution is something that, you know, the big publishers can do for you, which we cannot do. Yeah. Um, although we could, if you are inclined to have that national presence, we can help you get on um, uh, portals that will allow you to do that. Like Ingram, I think you guys are having a special right now with Ingram, right? Uh, and that, if you, once you're on Ingram, you are available for bookstores to order, you know, um, your book. Now we do ship books to uh, bookstores, right? We, um, we and we don't go. They don't. We don't go through a third party like Ingram or Bowker or Brodart. It's exactly and so. It's cheaper for the bookstores to be buying it from us direct because there's now not another piece to that. You know, another person putting their hands on it. Uh, so we do sell to bookstores, and we have sold books nationwide to bookstores. Yeah. It's just that the bookstores, it's they pay for the books up front. I mean, there's no consignment. We do not have any ability to do what the big five does as far as printing a huge amount of books and putting them in bookstores on the hope that they sell. That is something that we right. can. And isn't it true that bookstores have the option to return the unsold books? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we've, had to, we've had to buy them back from yeah. some. Yeah, I had. Um, I, uh, Oh, yeah, I had to drive to the Barnes and Noble in I don't know Addison at one point to actually buy our books back, and they charged me tax. Yeah, <laughs> um, so um, yeah, it's uh, it's very and and that is why when I see a smaller publisher doing this, I I, I wonder how are they able to do this profitably because right. we haven't figured it out. And if anybody knows how to do it profitably, yeah, let us know. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, unless. Uh, yeah, unless they're getting their books produced for, you know, seven times less than we are, I have no idea how. Which, which we can't imagine because Dave has uh, all I kinds of everybody. connections in that world. Yeah. There's just no. There's uh, just yeah. No. Um, I had a question and it just went away. What is your, what do you consider your most successful book to date? You know, um, I think that goes back to what it is, the mission of the book, you know, and what the author wants out of the book, too. Um, you know, I, for instance, Randy's book, Obsession, uh, Obsessions, uh, we it sold, sold very well. We had a just yeah. a, still my favorite book signing that we've ever had. There was a horse at the book signing. <laughs> I mean, you know, how, how did that happen? It was a Clydesdale, right? Uh, oh my God. It, was, it, it was that was a, an unbelievable uh, afternoon at Murphy's Pub in, in Chicago, where uh, nice. you know ex Cubs showed up. Uh, you know the Clydesdale horses showed up, and there was only one horse. Ton Rick, of one horse. One horse. Okay, yeah, uh, right. I exaggerated. Uh, and we yeah. raised a ton of money for um, a charity, a, charity, a, yeah. a little league charity. You know, so. That's a pretty successful book in my eyes. Uh, we have a book right now, um, Mob Adjacent, which they the, the mission of the of the authors was not necessarily to sell a lot of books, although they've done actually pretty good. It was to create a product that they can um, they can shop to Netflix, and, yeah. and and we are getting close. I mean, they yeah. have, we're we've been so, having meetings that. It's it's uh, deals are in development, you know, it, yeah. and so that would also be a success in a different way. And, you know, right. Um, you know, and, and again, I, I'm very hesitant to say a thousand books is a success or something like that, because it also depends on what are you selling the books for? You know, right. what it, we get authors all the time that says, well, our fir my first book sold 2000 books and then, well, they sold it for two dollars and ninety nine cents on Amazon, you know, and then you're like, well, that's, I, I'm not going to besmirch that if that's the way you want to go. Uh, but it's, you know, there's a lot of, th there's a lot of different metrics that you can use as far as what success is. Um, 
And as long as our authors are happy, and I think that's a successful relationship. And, and we try to choose authors that will be happy, <laughs> which yeah. that makes sense. If I can chime in here, I, I've now published three different books with Eckhart's, um, all different, two were novels and one was uh, nonfiction, that was the Concessions book. Um, and the reason that I keep coming back to them is because they're easy to work with. I, I want, I don't have a lot of time I'm very busy. I've got a lot of things that I'm doing and I want this process to be easy. And with them, it's always easy. It's always flexible. They let me do things the way that I want to do them. Um, and that has included um, setting up um, big events where I've sold 200, 300 books at one time and for charity and they've supported those charities too as through their publishing company as well. Um, and that I appreciate. And, you know, like they, they said that their dream author was the, the author who's not looking to make money. That's me. <laughs> but I'm looking to make money for the charities that I'm raising money for with these books. And I've made a lot of money for those charities. And, and it's because of the work that they put in and, and it's through every step of the process. I mean, I've, in, in, in each book, I think I've had different levels of involvement. Um, and, and in the Cub Sessions book, I was working with a co-author and we, we had a design for the cover in mind and we had a, a designer that we wanted to work with. It was a friend of my co-author or a relative of my co-author. And they let us do that. And I just appreciated their willingness to work with us and through all, you know, how I wanted the book to be at every step. And uh, that's why I keep coming back to them. Yeah. And Randy, <laughs> yeah, Randy is just, you know, and again, he brought the horse. So right. <laughs> if you guys have a horse, you're in it. You, know, you're, you get the dessert, you get the large coffee if you bring us a horse. Uh, that's uh, a very high bar. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, and um, you know, these are your stories. The authors, you know, the, it's their little, their babies, right? And you know, we we will nurture it, and we will, you know, if we don't agree necessarily on a cover idea, whatever, we'll we'll get to a commonality. You know, right. um, we um, again because we rely so much on the authors buying into it and selling the book. If they're not happy with what the book looks like, feels like, and they're not comfortable, well, then they're not going to buy into it. Right. Right. And we deal with, we've dealt with a lot of media types in Chicago. We've, we've published probably a, a dozen or so books from Chicago celebrities. If you want to go on our website, you can see who some of those people are. And they're used to, um, you know, being pampered a little bit. They, you know, they grew up in that world and they've all been happy with the way they, that we deal with them too. And, um, you know, everybody wants that moment, uh, in the sun and even people that are already in the sun, if that makes any sense. Or we're in the sun. Yeah. Or we're in the sun. Right. Mark wants to know if you would do a republish of a nonfiction book that's been on the market for four years. Well, we, we just have did. done, we've done a couple of republishes. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, uh, Mabo Jason is a they we republished Mabo Jason, so yeah, well, uh, sure. I mean, we will look into it, absolutely. If you have all the rights for it and everything, you know, obviously, right? We're not going to go yeah, to court, it's with your Random book, House. right? We're not going to republish uh, William Shakespeare, <laughs> you <Right>. know, <laughs> even if I put my name on it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's William Shakespeare. It's totally yeah. different. Samantha Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, if someone wants to submit, send in a submission for a fiction book, what would they do? How would they contact you? Uh, well, they can email us. I mean, um, um, really, what I'm looking for in the email is uh, just a synopsis of what the book is. Um, and I will get back to you based on that. You know, if it's something that I think sounds interesting, I'll ask to you to send a couple of chapters or maybe even the whole manuscript, depending on what it is. 
Um, we get a lot of submissions, so be patient with me. Um, you know, I get one every day pretty much. So I, my, I really try to go through them all as much as I can. So just be patient is all I ask. And how long is the publishing process if you decide to work with an author? It varies, but if the, if the, from the time that the manuscript is in a, once the final draft, once we sign off on a final draft, then it's really quick. I mean, then it's, you know, eight weeks or 12 weeks, not maybe not even. Now it depends upon all books are different as far as getting it to that point, you know, uh, but the production part of it um, is really. I always say three months, like from the moment we get your finished manuscript to the moment you get your first copy of the book, three months. Uh, But we can, and we've done a couple of times, we've had authors whose relatives were not doing well and they wanted the book to come out while their relatives were still healthy, you know, enough to attend their book signing. Uh, so we can jam it through quick. Um, <laughs> jam it through. That's well, you know, that's, this is my publishing. <laughs> this is now my, this is my printer hat on now, you know, we can fire up the 9,500 and get those, get those babies on a skid at no time. I try uh, to keep Dave out of the marketing part of the <laughs> company. Uh, uh, but no, I mean, we can, I mean, the production part of it, d- think of it now as really great copy machines you know right that's the 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 actual manufacturing of the book now it's not you know in the old days where you got the guy with the cigar with the the rolls of paper you know uh it's it's a button that is pressed on really great copy machines um and huge they're gigantic copy machines and you don't want to you don't want to clear one of those paper paths but uh (laughs) but no i mean seriously it's um, the production part of it is often the least time-consuming part of the process. I, I will say the Cup Sessions book, they came to me with the idea. Um, and I worked with a co-author and we, from the time that they came to us to the time that that book was published, it was almost exactly a year. So that included writing the book, well, it included doing the interviews, writing the book, creating the design for the book book cover, doing all the editing, everything, all within a year. And it, I thought it came out really, really great. And a traditional publisher, it's 18 months, start to finish. Yeah. So and it's hard, to, it's hard to anticipate something timely uh, in that, you know, in that 18 month window. Right. Yeah. It's hard to anticipate something timely anytime well that's true (laughs) but you know ken our author ken wrote a book on covid and we got it uh we got it out a children's book about children's book about safe you know safety um you know how kids can be safe and we were able to you know he also has a book right now that is uh about uh little steven from uh, uh bruce springsteen's e street band and uh, little Steven is, has gotten it sold into the uh, school systems in uh, New Jersey and uh, I, I, New York or Connecticut also. Uh, Ken, Ken will have to tell us. But, um, and he's out there promoting it. So okay. we've got you know, a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer out there promoting one of our books, which is fantastic. Yeah. I, I would think that if an author is willing and able to get out there and promote, that would be somebody you would want to work with. Exactly. Yeah. Because we have the connections to make it happen. Yeah. And, you know, most authors, a lot of authors, I won't say most, but a lot of authors are introverts. They don't like to get out in public. public. They don't like to, you know, talk about themselves. But suck it up and do it because, really, that's the only way you're going to sell books. Yeah. yeah. And you're obviously a storyteller already because exactly. you wrote the book. Right. So but you know, a a lot of people are better on paper than they are in person. And here's the other thing about when, if you've never done a radio or, or a television interview, they're really not intimidating at all. You're in a room with a couple of people. It's not, I mean, if you, if you are good at self-deception, like I am, 
it's just the conversation. You don't think about the people that are out there. Um, and it's really not scary at all. And, and, you know, Rick, Rick has been a radio producer for, or was for what, 20 years. He right. knows all the little tricks. We will send in the questions in advance. So, you right. know, exactly we what they're produced the segment for the outlets. So all they, you know, so when I walk in there with somebody, um, I, I've got the angle for the host to help right. him uh, make the show good because we want the show to be good. Right. And, and radio producer, I, if you can hand somebody nine minutes of content that they don't have to think about, right. oh, it's it, like, it's sure. Because you know, right. they're lazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And if we bring, we sometimes bring bagels too, which is like win win. That's the key. Bring a dozen bagels with two schmears, and I could get you on any radio show in the country. Um, Molly wants to know regarding children's books, do you have illustrators that you work with? Or uh, what we do. We have someone. We have a couple of illustrators we work with, but usually when. Uh, children's authors approach us they have their own uh illustrator already uh, but we do know people that are illustrators that we can hook you up with i'm trying i'm trying to think all of our children's books that we have done i believe have been illustrator they've provided their own i'm trying to think have we no the the one uh, that the mommy one from last year oh yeah, yeah. that's right yeah. that's right um, and we we do and and my uh my i wrote a book called father knows nothing which is a uh, a collection of my columns uh, being a dad and that was illustrated by uh, someone uh, who did a great job illustrating it so we, we know illustrators too and are your children's books are they like the 32 page illustrated books or are they yeah yeah your your standard you uh, children's books yeah. things. right we have not done one with a hard cover with the, that we've only had now I'm going to get a little printery for you. We've had 12 point, uh, the, the oh, colors. Uh, right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Guys, you need to, you need to block out another hour and a half now. Cause I'm going to tell you all about oh, the color. Uh, um, we have not done board books. Uh, not, right. to that, not to say that we necessarily can't, we just have never done it. Um, and I'm trying to think, I don't think, well, no, we did do a hard, a case wrap book that had a hard cover as well. So, but board books, we have not done, um, but we'll look into it. You know, we have no problem. Don't you have any, don't you have any uh, printer jokes you'd like to tell everyone while we have them here? <laughs> I'm only on my beer and a half, right? Oh, okay. The third beer, right. I am going to be flopping out all the good ones. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Um, so, so Molly asked, are they set up like double trucks. I have no idea what that means. If you guys know what that means, you could answer that question. Now we're getting, yeah, we're getting into a little uh, in the in the weeds. Uh, but basically with digital printing, they don't, they don't print from spreads. They print from single sheets. Uh, uh, yeah. You know what? Why don't you all guys take about 10 minutes now? Uh, I'm gonna t talk to my, uh, so with, the, with our digital printers, it is, um, like I said, uh, we don't we don't print from spreads. However, um, we can. I'm sure we can figure out a production um, uh, element that would be able to. to do. We talk. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> That's a very <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, we have one more minute until we say goodnight. So if somebody has another question, you can put it in the chat. Otherwise, this has been really enlightening. And, you know, it's such a publishing is such a difficult business. It's difficult. I mean, it's hard as hell to write a book. Yeah. Right? I mean, it we're is. all working at that, but it's really hard to do. And then to get it published you know, to get it published with some somebody like you guys who really cares about writers and about the community and about helping people realize their dream. I mean, I I, I applaud you for what you're doing. Well, oh, thanks. Well, thank you. Well, you're talking right here on the Zoom call is the Simon and the Schuster of our company. So <laughs> you get the, you have the contact information of Simon and Schuster. We will we get back to you. You know. Uh, 
Yeah, we decided we were like Dave was in the paper business and I was in radio business and we decided that we wanted to find an even more difficult business. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And that's yeah. why we went yeah. into printing. Um, one thing that we should say, um, if you live on the third floor without an elevator, I'm not <laughs> carrying the books up anymore. <laughs> uh, Vicky, who's on the call, almost I, I just caught my breath. Yes, you almost killed you almost <laughs> killed Dave. Right. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> right. And also, we love if you come from a really big Catholic family with a lot of brothers and sisters and relatives, we love that too, if they all buy the books too. Right. So, so first floor Catholics, that's really what we're right. looking for. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. This has been just a pleasure talking with you. I'm sure everyone enjoyed the conversation and learned a lot. So thanks again. Well, thanks for having us. Thanks yeah. everyone. And look, yes. Everybody's clapping. Oh, go on. And look. <laughs> this is a Shirley Temple, by the way. <laughs> and you're the one who said, do I, what did yeah, you ask I me? I, I wanted the cocktail. Free drink, I don't know. Yeah. I've finished mine, so. <laughs> and it was not a Shirley Temple. So it's time to say good night then. Thanks. See you later. Thank you, everybody. Be safe, everybody. See you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.